All right, so in today's tutorial, we're going to talk about the last um, built-in object type in Python. And this object type is a file. And you know what files are. You see them on your computer all the time. So what do we need to know files for? Well, in working with Python, it's a way for us to save data. Um, if we were to uh, create a f program and we want the right data that we could reuse in a later session, well, we would have to save it to a file. We can't just save it in the memory and hope that when we restart our program that that data is going to be there. We need somewhere to write it. And that's what files do for us. It allows us to save data. Now, there's a couple of different ways to work with files in Python. And the first way that I'm going to show you, it's going to be a very basic tutorial on opening a file, writing a file, uh, closing a file and then reading the file, um, we really can only send strings back and forth from our, let's say, program to the external file that's storing our data and then back to our program. So it's, it's only really strings. Now there's a couple modules out there that allow us to, um, uh, are not modules, should say packages, that allow us to work with other types of data which will allow us to work with our different data types that we looked at. Um, but for now, we're just going to focus on sing sending strings back and forth. We're going to take a look at how do we create a connection between our program and our um, external data source, which is a file. Um, we're going to also learn how to write to that file. And then we're going to learn how to uh, close that file, which really takes the information that we wrote to the file out of memory and actually writes it to the file and then we're going to read the data back all right so the first thing i want you to do is um go ahead and open up your terminal um and we want to change into our um into our desktop so i'm going to cd back out of my programs file here i'm um, in my desktop and the reason i say i want you to do this is because when we create a file we want it to go into our desktop so we can actually see it happening and we can locate it easily. Um, we can actually create a file to a certain path, but that's a little bit uh, a little ahead of ourselves right now. So we're just going to create a file in the um, current location we're in. Now to create a file, first off, we need to fire up our Python interpreter. So uh, Python three, all right. So we got our Python interpreter open. Um, now we're going to create a file and we can use the open function to create that file. So let's go ahead and create a variable first that will maintain the connection between, let's say this is our program here and an external data source or file. All right. So let's go ahead and create a variable. So I'm going to call mine file because it represents a file. All right. And I'm going to set that variable to represent our connection. And the way we get a connection is using the open function. All right. So this creates a connection between, let's say this is our program and our external data source. Now I'm going to create a file, it must be in a string format, and I'm going to call it test1. All right. And we could put txt here, but it's not required. Now if you try to, um, what was I going to say? Oh, it's got to be in a string format, and if you try to do it without a string format, it's going to say test1 doesn't exist. All right, so the first argument is the file name that we're going to create, because this is actually going to create a file for us. And then our second argument is going to be the mode. Now, there's a couple modes that um, are available with open. We can use R, which is just read the file, but our file has nothing in it now, so R is not going to do anything for us. W which allows us to write to the file. So that, that will allow us to do something. So um, we're going to use W, all right, like that. And there are, the other um, modes are R+, plus, which is read and write. And then um, A, which is uh, append to the end of the file. So if we wrote something, it appends it to the end of the file. Now something to understand is if you already have test one dot text on your uh, in your desktop and we wrote this we're going to overwrite that file all right because we're using w um, if we're using r it won't overwrite it because then we're just reading the file for using r plus it's not going to overwrite it either 
uh, if we use A, it's not going to overwrite either. So, but if we use W, it's going to overwrite that file. So you got to be ca cautious of how you work with that. Because if you got a lot of data that you've been saving in that file, and you you know put test one and then W, you're going to overwrite that file, and that that's going to be a pretty rough day right there. All right, so just again, this is our file name, or this could be a path to a file name. So. If we were outside the desktop and we want to just put a path, say it was in like a programs file, you could do that as well. Um, <clears throat> and then remember, this is the mode. You got R for read, W for write, R plus for read and write, and A for append to the end of the file. We'll take a look at them in a future tutorial. All right, so let's go ahead and hit enter. Now we create a connection. We also created a file. So if you go to your desktop, I want to bring up my uh, finder here. And if I go to my desktop, I'm going to see there's test one in here. I'm going to open this up in my text editor. If that ever comes available. There we go. Sublime text. And I'm going to open it up in here. Now you see test one has absolutely no information in it. Okay, good, because we didn't write any information. But we did create a file, and this file currently contains no information. So let's go ahead and write some information to it. All right, so the next step is we want to write. Now, how do we write? Well, we're going to use a method called write. Pretty simple, right? A lot of writes there. So file, all right, because we want to grab that connection because the file uh, variables holding that connection. And then we're going to use the write method, write. All right, and then inside here, it takes a string. So let's go ahead and... Um, Put a string in here. We're going to say this is our first line, okay? And then, uh, you know what? I want to put a uh, backslash n for a uh, new line because we're going to have a couple lines here. So I want it to go to the next line. All right, so what we did here is we got the connection via the variable and then use the write method, which is going to actually write the data to our file. And if I hit return, it returns 23 to me. What is the 23? Well, we use 23 actual index locations in the file. So if you counted all these out, there would be 23 characters or special characters or spaces. So 23 index positions, if you remember back to our string tutorial. All right. So <clears throat> let's write another file. Uh, write another line, not another file. So file dot write. And this time we're going to say this is our second line. All right, backslash n, escape character, new line. All right, hit return. And we're going to do one more. We'll do uh, file dot write. This is our third line. And we'll do the backslash n. Close out our, line, our string, close out our write method, and hit return. All right, cool. So now go ahead and open up your um, text editor one more time, or your text uh, test one file. I need to open it. I thought I had it open, but no. All right, I'm going to open it up. And then this time I didn't open up my text editor. I opened it in text. So you see there's nothing here. There's no information in this file at all. So what happened? What did we just do? Well, actually what we're doing is basically writing this to RAM. It's not getting written to our hard disk where our file actually is. It's just in memory right now. It's just sitting there stored in a, in a, um, you could say the variables just representing stored memory in the RAM. If you're very familiar with computers, you know, RAM is just temporary memory where on the hard disk is uh, your, uh, your, your memory that's around for a while. Um, so, all right, so it's just sitting there temporarily. So now we need to do something to make it get written to our file. Well, we use the close method to say, hey, all right, we're done writing to this file. Now take the information we wrote and put it into our file. So this is very simple. We just do file.close. All right, the close method, hit return, and now open your file, and you will see your information. All right, uh, desktop, and open with sublime text. 
there we go. This is our first line. This is our second line. This is our third line. Awesome. We actually took data, all right, and put it into our interpreter and wrote it into a file. That's pretty cool, actually, that you can do that with just a couple lines of code. All right. So now that we wrote the data into our file, how are we going to read this? All right. So we want to read it here in our interpreter. So what we want to do is reopen our file. So how do we do that? Well, we just do file is going to represent our connection again. Open. And we're just going to do test one. All right. Now we don't have to put R. We can if you want, but R is default. So we just want to read it. So we don't have to put it because it's default. It will default to read only. All right. So now we made that connection again. Now there's a couple ways to read um, the data. So we're going to do the first one and then we're going to do, do the second one, but we're going to have to reconnect. So let's go ahead and take a look at it. Let's do file dot, uh, let's do read first. So we'll use the read uh, method first, hit return, and this is your first line and backslash n, which is new line, but this is a raw data. It's returned to us in raw data, so we can take a look at that in a second. And you see it's all strung together. So, all right, cool. So let's do um, print, oops, print file dot read. And you know what, that's not gonna work. Um, let's do file dot close. All right, and then we're gonna have to reopen it. So we'll do file dot open test one. Let's close out the string. Now let's do uh, print file dot read. And you see it prints out something a lot easier to read to us. This is our first line, this is our second line, this is the third line. So this is not the raw data, this is the raw data. So what happened when we did read? Well, read's gonna return to us all the information in the file. All right, so when we do read, Basically, it goes through the whole file and returns all the information to us. So what it does is it reads all the information. If we still have the file open, then it's like, okay, I read you all the information. And when we ran read again, print read right here, it returned nothing because it already returned the information to us. So it's already at the bottom of our file. So to restart that, we have to do file close, file open to get it back to the top. Now let's do it one more time. File.close. And we're going to read line by line this time. Let's do um, <coughs> file open again. Sorry about that. Test one. All right, now we'll do uh, file dot read line method and it's going to read line to line. So we do file dot read line again. As you can see, that's our first line, then our second line, file dot read line. Boom. We've read through all three lines, all right? So what this does, is the read line just goes one line at a time, okay? Where the read reads them all. So that's the basics of creating a file, creating a connection between two files, so we, or our program and our external data source, writing to that file, um, actually saving that data in the file using the close method, and then reading the file. So that's pretty much covered a lot of working with files, but we're gonna read a little bit more into it and study a little bit more in the next tutorial. Um, and we'll also look at the different packages we have available to us to save other data types other than strings. So I'll see you in the next tutorial. If you have any questions, leave a comment on mastercode.online's forum, and I'll see you then.